Welcome friends to another Mercy Moment Emory episode and it is almost midnight when I'm filming this episode and I intentionally am going to do this because sometimes inspiration hits literally in the middle of the night and I just want to be consistent to show up when it arrives because I think the ideas and the concepts that I receive are timely, important, and worth capturing in the moment straight from the heart. So take a walk with me in the dark and you're gonna see why I'm intentionally drawing upon the darkness to film this episode. So stick with me, I know I may not be seen, but that's on purpose. So here's the, the concept and the perspective that I think is an important urgency to understand this brand new day. And that is better than expected. Rediscovering hope in the midst of loss. Loss in a lot of ways seems to darken our perspective, seems to darken our world to darken our heart and it seems as if the light will never return. Have you been there? Have you been in that place where everything within you seems like your life is over? All hope seems to be lost. Everything seems shrouded by this, this loss of, of another person, of a dream, of someone you loved and you feel like you're wandering in the midst of the darkness with little energy, little desire to keep going, and you feel lost and disoriented. Maybe that's how you feel right now in this moment as you listen to this video. Please stick with me because lights do come on, things do change, seasons do shift, and I'm here to tell you that your loss is not the end, but it actually is a new beginning. And the perspective you keep is what will either limit or liberate you. And we each have a choice. What perspective are we then to keep in the midst of our loss? And I'm here to tell you, it's of great importance what you choose. And listening to the right input is central to emerging on the other side stronger, better, victorious, and wealthier than when you were stripped bare. Because I'm here to tell you that maybe your loss is actually the preparation to receive a whole lot more. Maybe the loss was the stripping away for the purpose of enriching your life to a greater proportion than you ever dreamed possible. We see this concept in nature over and over again. The world is darkest right before the sun appears. Also we see it with a forest fire. A forest fire seems to decimate the landscape and leave it scorched. This is also the very catalyst of dropping this seed that's stuck, that's stuck and encumbered by its present condition. And it, the seed is released and it's dropped and the scorched ground becomes the most fertile ground for a whole new crop to appear. So the scorching and the loss becomes the catalyst of the greatest environment for the most epic in proportion growth of new life. What if you saw your loss through that lens? Maybe the forest fire has stripped you bare and decimated your world and you feel exposed, you feel tender, and you feel that all hope seems lost. Well, let me tell you, what if that was the setup for something better than you ever thought imaginable? What if it's gonna be better than you expected? But here's the problem. If you see it differently, you're gonna receive it differently. I'm gonna say that again. 
if you see it differently, you will receive it differently. So there's a choice here. And what you perceive, you will receive. So your perception does become your reality. And that perception either limits or it liberates. So today I wanna to challenge you. Let the lights come on and take a walk with me here at midnight because I know my father and he is working at midnight. He doesn't stop, he's not limited by time, he doesn't sleep. And I know this, he takes the greatest losses and they become the catalyst and the fertile ground of the greatest victory. The case in point is Jesus, the Messiah, the radical redeemer himself. Death came with a horrific death through scourging, losing crazy amounts of blood, and then suffocating to death on a cross. And his disciples were decimated. Their expectations were shot. But this was the fertile ground in the bedrock. Death was the fertile ground of the greatest comeback story of history. As breath entered his lungs, he was laid in a grave, he was buried. And for three days, all hope seemed lost. The shadows were present, darkness descended. But it was here that things begin to shift. As breath came into his body again. And he not only rose, but he rose victorious with the power over death. And he overcame. And that same spirit that raised him from the dead lives in every son and daughter of God who embraces him through repentance and faith in his finished work. So I'll say it again, the shadows may have come into your life, darkness may have descended, but I'm here to offer a different perspective that you may not see in this moment. It may not resonate, it may, you may not feel this, but feelings can be deceptive. So I wanna encourage you, by faith, let this sink into your soul. I know I'm going, to, going a little long. It probably is getting closer and closer to midnight and maybe midnight in your life and all hope seems lost. But I wanna encourage you to challenge what you see and look beyond what is seen to what is unseen because what is seen is temporary, but what is unseen is eternal. Better than expected. Rediscovering hope in the midst of loss. May your loss be fertile ground of radical transformation and encounter with the living God. Because pain is a place of revelation and loss can become the very place of encounter. May you be encountered by the radical redeemer and may hope be uplifted and the lights come on in your heart, soul, and spirit. Love you, friends.